So what we're going to do now, we're going to go into the lesson, okay, especially dealing with what is going on within the world. We just, you know, came out of what this world would call Halloween. And now we're going towards, you know, their feast day season, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And we know there, there, there comes... When those holidays, so-called holidays, come in, there's a sense of pressure that is given, you know, towards the families to get, try to get us complicit with this world's so-called holidays, okay? So the title of the lesson is Envy Not the Sinner. So many times we'll be in the truth and understand under Christ there comes a certain level of discipline okay that really the world the world doesn't have so we have to be in a mind mindset and understand that we're really not missing anything what the most I gave us is greater than what the world has okay so it's a time now not to envy the sinner. So we're going to go into the commentary and then go straight into the lesson, right? So there are no shortages of temptations these days. And it seems as if no matter what perversion you can think of, there is somebody into it. With such a broad path to destruction and so many flavors of sin, it can be hard to resist in the flesh being the path into the kingdom is so narrow. In the world, we just partake in sin and don't care too much about the consequences. But in the truth, many think about the consequences and are still and still desire to partake in sin. The reality is this double minded mentality is a common thing and many fall from the truth because they envy the options that sinners have to partake in, being that their path is broad. We must not forget the righteous reasons why we came to the truth and also not forget that the sinners will have their day in judgment, okay? So we're gonna go to the book of Job, chapter 18 and verse, starting at verse five, come on. Yea, the light of the wicked shall be cut out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. So it tell you that the light of the wicked shall be cut out. Eventually, those that desire to do what's wicked and not follow the Most High, even though it may look like they're getting away with what they're getting away with in the world now, eventually it's going to come to an end. Okay, come on. Job 18 and 6. Read. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. His what counsel? His own counsel shall cast him down. Because at the end of the day, one that doesn't follow the Most High doesn't really respect dominion or authority or what was ordained in the heavens. They really follow their own counsels. They walk to the beat of their own drum, so to speak. Right? Come on. For he is cast into a net by his own feet. By his who feet? His own feet. By his own feet. Come and on. And he walketh upon a snare. Mm. The gin shall take him by the heel, and a robber shall prevail against him. Exactly. Come on. The snare is laid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side. Exactly. So he'll always be worried. Snares everywhere. Demon possessed. Bad dreams. All those things that come with the spirit of wickedness. Okay? And not leading and living a cleanly life. Right? Come on. And shall drive him to his feet. Mm. His strength shall be hunger, bitten, 
And destruction shall be ready on his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin, even the firstborn of his of death shall devour his strength. Verse. Job eighteen and fourteen. Come on. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, mm. and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in the, his tabernacle because it is none of his. Because it's none of his. Read. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His root shall be dried up beneath, and above all, above shall his branch be cut off. Read. His remembrance shall perish from the earth. His remembrance. See, this is the portion of a wicked man. His remembrance shall perish from the earth. No longer will that soul, will that, that, that person be regarded. Just gone forever. Okay, there is, no, there is no reincarnation here. Okay, you don't die and turn into a frog in your next life and try to get it right. There is no second, no. It is appointed for men once to die. And after that, the judgment. Come on now. He shall have no name in the street. Mm. Job 18.18. 18. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwelling. They that come after him shall be atoned at his day, as they that went before were affrightened. Read. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and in this place of him that knoweth not the Most High. At the end. Of all of this confusion, the wicked will be cast into a pit of destruction, never to be remember again, along with their wicked generation. Okay? We have to keep these things in mind before we get caught up, up on social media, which is designed to fuel sin and to fuel the desire to want things that are unfruitful. Too many people suffer from depression by following other people's lives online and their false realities that they profess to their followers. If these people were happy with their lives, they wouldn't need followers to make them feel validated. You wouldn't need to like my comment if I was comfortable in my own skin. I wouldn't need a reply. I wouldn't need you. Hey, did you see that scripture? I just posted a picture. Did you like my picture? Somebody that's comfortable within their skin and, and, and secure within their walk with the most high, you don't need that type of reverence. Okay, there's no, there, there's no need for that type of vanity. Okay, there, there, you understand? So let's look at, we have some research here from Forbes.com, right? We're going to read some research. The title is, Research Links Heavy Facebook and Social Media Usage to, to Depression, which is a spirit altogether. Researchers at the University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine recently conducted a study about the effects of social media, habits, or moods of users. The research determined that more time young adults use social media, the more likely they are to be depressed. The findings from this study could potentially help clinical professionals aid depressed patients. Okay, compare against users that view social media less frequently Participants that use social media very frequently have a 2.7 times the likelihood of depression. And compared to people that spent less time, participants that have, participants that have spent the most time on social media throughout the day had a 1.7 time the risk of depression. The researchers also accounted that other possible factors of depression, including age, gender, race, relationship status, living conditions, education levels, and household incomes in the study. They all factored in. But understand, a lot of things that you're seeing 
within the social media is only what somebody wants you to see. It's only, it's only what they would call a profile. Okay? That's somebody's profile. That's what they want you to see. That's the image that they portray. Everything's good, okay? But listen, while you see them and they in the street and they might be posted up next to a car with some rims that may not may or may not be theirs, okay? They never post a picture that says the rent's due now, <laughs> okay? L let me see that, okay? I want to see that picture. Let me see that, hey, you know, I'm on child support. And I ain't got no money here, okay? They never show you that. They only show you the good stuff that they want you to see, and everybody believes what they see on the other side of that IP address, okay? Understand, that's not a reality. That's why Christ, okay, in the doctrine of Christ in the Bible, give you what you should be doing. What Leviticus 23 say, you should be gathering together. OK, because there's an accountability that comes together with touching and agreeing with the children of Israel, with seeing how people operate within the spirit of the most high. It's a difference. You can't get that over the Internet. OK, it is possible that people who are depressed use social media to fill a void. According to Lee author Lu Yi Lin, however, Exposure to social media can cause depression, which leads to more social, social media usage, okay? Why would heavy social media usage cause depression? That's a good question, right? The exposure to highly idealized representations appears on social media elicits feelings of envy and distorted beliefs that others lead happier, more successful lives. Study, it says the study, people that engage in activities of little meaning on social media make them feel like they're wasting time. Spend, it says spending more time on social media increases the exposure to cyberbullying, thus causing the feeling of depression. And social media fuels internet addiction which is considered a psychiatric condition linked to depression. Like when you just can't stop getting on your timeline, that's a problem. You just can't leave your phone alone. Like every second you go to your phone to check some feed, that's a problem. Like you're more engaged with what's not real instead of being engaged with your life and people that are around you. Okay, then we wonder why in this day and age, homes are broken. Relationships between family members aren't what they used to be because the building is not amongst each other. It's on, it's on some text, which is impersonal. Okay? Like when you text somebody and say, stop playing, somebody can take that any way they want to take it. Because you're not, it, it, what emphasis are you, are you putting it in? And it's up to somebody's interpretation to, 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 to say, okay, they said stop playing. That's threatening. And you could have been playing, like, child, stop playing. But without you having that peer-to-peer, that -peer, person-to-person interaction, offenses come in. And you know what the Bible say? It says abstain from what? All appearances of evil. So if it look evil, leave it alone. If it could be misconstrued as an offense, leave it alone. It's not worth, it's not worth adding something that you don't, you're not even in harm's way. If you leave it alone, you're not in harm's way. You mess with it, you're putting yourself in, in, in harm's way where something can be misconstrued and you, can, you know what you'll end up saying? I didn't mean it that way. Well, how does somebody know that? And you know, what, know how you're going to fix it? You're going to get on the phone or, or see somebody and then talk it out, which you should have done in the first place. Okay? There it is in the headlines for all to see. Envy develops due to a distorted reality of what others 
may have at their disposal, opposed to what followers may have. Most people live, most people's lives are a lie, and the sooner we realize that, the better. Okay? I mean, and not to be on a funny note, but I don't know how many people have been caught. You know, they have a term for certain things on the internet, like catfish. Okay? They put up a profile pic, you understand? And people get in love with the profile pic. Okay, I met this, this sister, she's righteous, she's gorgeous, and you know you've only liked her based off of her profile picture, okay? She had an angle that was flattering to her, and you like that, okay? Then when you see them in person, you're like, wait, hold up, okay? This isn't what I'm seeing on the screen, okay? That's, yeah, because you didn't understand. That's a filter and an angle. Okay, all phones now are, are equipped with what's called a beauty filter, okay? People use it, overuse it. It smooths the face out, it, it, you know, it puts sparkles in the eyes, it do all extra stuff, okay? That's demonic, okay? That's not what they look like, okay? So when you see them in person, somebody may feel like, okay, this is what I'm getting, I've been having this conversation with this person, it's been a year, that they're beautiful, then you see them, it's a whole nother zone. But then when it, you see them, you, you say you like, like them based off your conversation. No, but when you see them, it's all over. To show you that, you know what? It was all about lust anyway. Okay? It's a den of sin on that internet. Okay? It's Satan's playground. Trust what I'm saying here. Okay? So even in the truth, we still get sucked into this social media to the point we get depressed and want others to have what others have when all things that are claimed are corruptible. Let's go to Psalms 17 and 8. Keep me as the eye of the apple. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. So keep me as the apple of thy eye. Read. From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies who can pass me about, they are enclosed in their own fat. With their mouth they speak proudly. Exactly, read. They have no compassion. They have now compassed us in our steps. They have set their eyes, bowing down to the earth, like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And as we were a young lion larking in secret places. Come on. Arise, O Lord, appoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Read. For men which are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world. From men of the world. Read. Which have their portion in this life. Exactly, because, see, understand, when you're of this world, that's your portion. Your portion is the minimal time that you have to operate on this earth with the riches that you feel like you have, the notoriety that you feel like you've had. But guess what? None of that stuff lasts when it comes after this. What, what is more important is the things that tend to eternal life. That's what we should be striving for. What you have within a body of Christ is something that was established within the heavens. What you have within a family is something that was established within the heavens in the beginning of creation. Those are things that are eternal. But the things that we ascribe to do aren't things that are set up on eternal promises. Right? Come on. And whose belly thou fulfillest with thy high treasure... They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. Mm. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. With thy likeness. So the prophets realize these worldly nations were set over us to chastise us. And to have us, event and, and, and to have us eventually have those who desire to be righteous seek the Father once more. The wicked have children and are able to leave them an inheritance, and we envy them. 
But the truth is there, but but the truth is there's their seed is cursed. And they are burdened to the earth. See, this is the thing, right? Because we look at that. Well, and and I think that that's a common theme amongst the black and brown community. We talk about legacy, and we talk about leaving money as an inheritance from one another, and this is why as a nation we can't grow. No. As a nation of people that are under the Most High, who the covenant went to, the promises of Abraham, the reason why we can't grow as a nation is because we don't deal with the covenant that the Most High made with us. That's how we were sold into slavery. Remember, when you read Deuteronomy 28, he said, look, if you would do all these things, the blessings would come upon you. If you don't do these things, the curses shall come upon us. So instead of looking at the financial aspect, the first thing we need to get together as a people before that, as a precursor, is the spiritual aspect. Teaching your children how to live righteous, clean lives. How to abstain from doing wicked things against the commandments of the Most High. Teaching them how to deal with the dietary law, the moral law, the civil law, so on and so forth. And then all the other things that are needed to build the kingdom will come along with that. But we have to put things in perspective as a people first. Okay? Let's get to the book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 1. Come on. The heavens declare the glory of the Most High, and the filament show of his handiwork. Mm. Day unto day uttered speech, and night unto night show of knowledge. Read. There is no speech nor language. Where their voice is not heard. Come on. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And them have he set a tabernacle for the sun. For the sun, read. Which is the bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. Read. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Mm. The law of the Lord. This scripture here is very poignant. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is what? Psalms 19 and 7. Read. The law of the Most High is perfect. Is what? Is perfect. Is flawed. Is perfect. Is done away. Is perfect. The law of the Lord is perfect doing what? Converting the soul. Do you see that? So you know how we always talk about people being converted? There is no conversion into righteousness without dealing with the law of the Most High. It's perfect in converting the soul. So if one person would go from being wicked into dealing with righteousness and following the Most High, the only way you could do that is by following the law of the Most High. It's perfect in converting the soul. Because when you start to analyze your life according to the law, you start to find things that your flesh wants to do, that the law condemns. And then you're like, you know what? I can't do these things. I have to make sure that I line up with the word of the Most High. I got to make sure I line up with those law, statutes, and commandments. Maybe I'm coveting too much. Maybe I'm bearing false witness too much. I got to adjust, right? So the law of the Lord is perfect in converting the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Most High is sure. So the prophecy, the testimony of the Most High is sure. One thing you know that's sure is prophecy. If the Most High said it, if Christ said it, it, it's going to be done. It's going to come to pass. That's how the worlds were framed. By the word of the Most High. Okay. Okay. Read. Making wise the simple. Making what? Making wise the simple. You know when you're under the spirit of the most high, the most wise things become so simplistic. It takes scholars, okay, out here in the world to explain things. Like we gave the example, for instance, the calendar. We know what the most high gave us from Sabbath to Sabbath. What does the commandment say? Remember the Sabbath to do what? Keep it holy, right? 
So we know each week that come in have seven days within a week. There's 52 weeks in a year. Seven times 52 is 364 all day long. Okay? It takes so much more faith to believe in the, the, the paragraph, in the line that comes up with 365 and three quarters and a half or whatever they do in a leap year. The testimony of the most high short, it makes the wise the simple. There's a simple answer when it comes to scripture all the time that's straightforward. Okay? That's why the scriptures say, let your speech be yea or nay. Anything outside of that is what? It's evil. Say yes or no scenario. Either you're in sin or you're not. There is no gray area. Come on. Psalms 19 and 8. The statutes of the Most High are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Most High is pure, enlightening the eyes. Read. The fear of the Most High is clean. The fear of the Most High is clean. Enduring Read. forever. The judgments of the Most High are true and righteous altogether. Mm. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy, se thy servant warned, mm. and his keeping of them there is great reward. See, and it says, moreover, in verse 11, by them is thy servant warned. That's why the scripture says we should meditate in the law day and night. If we look at it, it's always a constant reminder. If I'm doing this, this, that, and this against that, okay, it's sin. So now I'm looking at the law. I'm looking at what I should be doing. Okay, I can read something. Okay, and there's a structure that tells me these are the do's and don'ts in the spirit of the Most High. If I'm doing anything outside of that, I'm working outside the Most High's will. Okay. If I'm looking at the scripture and it says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, and I'm doing otherwise, I'm outside the Most High's will. If I'm looking at thou shall not murder, and I'm out here killing people, not just, not just by deed and actually physically killing people, if I'm assassinating their character, talking about them, dealing with things of that nature, because remember, Cain, Cain before he became a murderer, already slewed his brother in his heart was already a murderer in his mind, already hated his brother without a cause. So if I'm looking at certain things and I'm not lining up to what the Most High is lining up to, I know that I'm, that I'm incorrect. But it says, moreover, by them is thy servant worn, and in keeping of them there is a great reward. So by the Most High's laws we're warned so that we may avoid the judgment to come. And the world also has been warned. The Bible has been the number one seller for decades. Still, the world acts as if they have no knowledge of the Most High's laws and statutes. Okay, listen, it is funny because everybody got one. You go into my mom's house, you go to big mama house, the Bible's always open to Psalms. It don't never move, but it been open to Psalms for like 20 years, okay? Don't touch the Bible, okay? Open it to Psalms, 121 or 119, open there and leave it there, okay? Listen, everybody got a, got a Bible in, in, in their house. So there's no excuses in the day of judgment why we didn't utilize what the Most High gave us from the beginning, which was the word of the Most High. We went into a lesson last night talking about paganism in Israel from then to now and talking about how faithful we were before we came to the truth, how faithful we were in paganism. Dealing with Christmas and Saturnalia, or Saturnalia as it's called. Thanksgiving and all that. Go into church, go into a church service where Matthew 1 might be the scripture. Okay, read Matthew 1 
boom, close the book, two hours of lecture. And we were faithful to that. Tithe paying members, supporting the church. Woo, my pastor preached. What did he preach? So how much more should we be faithful to the truth? Now that the Most High is revealing his secrets that we desire to have, his understanding that we've always craved and yearned to have. Now the Most High is, is we're really being taught. We're really desiring the knowledge and wisdom of the Father. So these are the things we really should be faithful to. Okay, let's get Luke. We're in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. Come on. And take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with Surfeiting and drunkenness. Surfeiting and drunkenness, right? Come on. And cares of this life, and so that that day come upon you unawares. Wait, hold up now. That what come upon you unaware? So that day come upon you unawares. See, listen. Okay. It's so many misquotes when we come out of the churches and understand that they've never been in the Bible. We go to the very scripture and show you, it doesn't say that. Oh, Jesus, he's coming like a thief in the night. What scripture is that? Okay? It tells you that that day, that day shouldn't come upon you. That means that you yourself weren't prepared. You were unaware. Okay? Christ ain't coming like no thief. Okay, he's coming at the last trump with the sound of the archangel. The whole world. See, you can't say one thing, preach one thing, and then say the other. Okay, you can't say that every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Christ is Lord, and then say there's a rapture. What? How does this happen? So now, when the last trump blasts, we secretly getting teleported out. But then everybody going to get on their knees, and I don't, that doctrine doesn't hold water. But read this verse again now. 2134, come on now. And take heed to yourselves. So take heed to yourselves. Lisa, any time your hearts be overcharged with so fighting, the drunkenness and cares of this life. That you be unaware and you're not paying attention. You're not getting your spirit right. You're not dealing with the law, statutes, and commandments. You tend to sink back into the world. Okay? You have to be sober and vigilant as Christ commanded us to be. Come on. And so that day come upon you unawares. Read. For as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Exactly. Read. Watch you therefore and pray always. What did Christ tell us to do? Watch and pray. Watch and pray. So we're supposed to be watching, looking at the signs of the times, and praying. Not getting worried. Oh my God, when are we going to leave? That's not the zone. The zone is watching and praying. And making sure that you're doing the works of the Most High. That you have some treasures stored up in heaven. That when it is time for the Most High to make, for him to command us to make our exodus, we're prepared and have works under us. But Christ said, watch and pray. Read. Watch ye therefore and pray always. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. See, and that's the whole thing that we also have to pray. That we're found worthy to escape. Everybody want to jump and, and get on a plane and roll. But there's a sense, you have to be worthy to escape the destruction. Because see, the scripture tell you, remember who? Lot's wife. That's a prime example. She wasn't worthy to escape because she escaped. She was out of Sodom. But remember, her heart and mind was in Sodom, so she looked back. What happened? Destruction. Remember, when we leave here, there's going to be a purge in the wilderness. 
So there's, so there's going to be some people that are going to make it on the other side of this to the wilderness. That have escaped just because they know. Or they was associated with the Israelites. Or associated with the truth. But then when the Most High come and send Christ. And we're in the wilderness. And we're to be proved in the wilderness. Those that are worthy to escape are going to be the only ones. That make it in Zion. So we got to pray that we're worthy of the escape of the Most High's judgment on the earth. Finish that scripture. To stand before the Son of the Most High. And to stand before Christ. Think about that. This is a daily thought, and that's why it says, watch therefore and pray. We gotta, that that got to be a part of our prayer every day. That when the day of visitation come, that we're worthy to stand before Christ. Okay? When you look to party amongst the lawless, judgment will come upon you in a time you're unaware and not expecting because your mind is only focused on wickedness. If you look to escape the harsh things, which shall come upon the wicked, you must be diligent. You must be a disciple of Christ. You can't be found, you can't be found amongst the wicked at that time. You now have to start practicing and doing and perfecting these righteous acts. Being faithful, dealing with the Most High, dealing with the Sabbath. Putting your hand to the plow. Going to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You got to perfect that now. There is no perfection when the trumpet blasts. Judgment begins at the house of the Most High. Begin with us. So at that time, as Elder Gabar always say, pins down. Test is over. So why the scripture says, he that is holy, let him be holy still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. Pencils, oh, test is over. So we have to get it right now. Okay? See, that's the one thing the world have taught. That there's a second chance. Oh, well, if you don't get it in the rapture, you'll go through a seven-year tribulation period. And Christ will come later, okay, a third time. There is no third coming of Christ. Okay, the Bible talks about a second coming of Christ. Okay, what is this third coming of Christ they be preaching out here? Okay, that is, that is the lie that's out there, that's out there to deceive, to make us feel like we got more time than what we have. This is it. Okay? This is, the, this is the time and the life that the most I have given you. You must seize the moment now. Deal with it now. Okay? There is no dealing with it on the other side. You got to correct it now. You got problems? Fix them now. You got things you have to reconcile? Reconcile them now. Because when, when, when that trumpet, it's not gonna, there's no time for that. See, that's when you can go into the parable of those virgins. Because when, when the door of the bride chamber was open, the five foolish wasn't getting themselves together. They wasn't getting any oil and trimming their lamps. But when the door was shut, and they were, and the ones that were bidded to come in were in. They like knocking, like, "Hey, could we get some of your oil?" And guess what? Brothers and sisters worldwide is going to be asking you that same thing. When the time is, where are you going? C can you just squeeze me in? You got a ticket for me? 
What you say is happening? Wait, hold up. I looked at CNN. It do look pretty bad. I mean, I, I know I know. I might have said you was in a cult, but hey, I better be safe than sorry. Listen, at that time, I only got enough oil for me and my family. I only got enough understanding for me and my for, for, for me and who the most high sealed and have been faithful to the most high. The time, brothers and sisters, is coming. It's coming. Okay, and we're living in a time where it's, it's, it's not good to envy the sinner. Because their portion is this wicked earth. Remember, the Bible says the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. Okay, that's what's going on right now. Right? Let's get Psalms 22 and 27. Come on. Thou shalt make thy prayer at the end of the world shall remember the turn unto the most high. Now and it says all the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. Read. The kindreds of and all the kindreds of the nation shall worship before thee. Come on. For the kingdom is the Lord's. And he is the governor among the nations. He is what? He is the governor among the nations. He is the what? He is the governor among the nations. Listen, my, my president will never be Barack Obama. My president will never be Donald Trump. My president is, always has been, and always will be Christ. The government sits on his shoulders. See, this is the thing that we have to understand. There is nobody that can take the crown of Christ. We already have a royal law. It's these commandments we're dealing with. We already have a constitution. We already have the do's and don'ts and how to live in life. Okay? We have to understand that there's nobody that can take the authority. That's why when Christ come, he taking all crowns back. Who is this that cometh from Bodzra? Christ going to every official, to every kingdom. Okay, you, look, you called yourself to be king? Okay, no, that's my authority. That's my crown. You call yourself president? You call yourself king of Saudi Arabia? No, I'm king of the world. Okay. Read. Psalms 22 and 29. And they that be fed upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. And none, see, then, then people will realize that your life was not yours. You weren't the creator. You weren't the one that made it. Nobody can keep their own soul. You're going to realize when, when, when the, the heavenly realm meet the earthen realm and the celestial government come from heaven and is in high rulership, you're going to realize at that point, okay, I, um, yeah, I definitely didn't make my own way. When order is set in the universe, then all that didn't believe will understand. Because the scriptures say every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. See, and this is the thing. You might as well confess now. You might as well get it right now and understand who the Lord of the world is, who, who the ruler of the world is, who, who the God of Israel is. The world better get it right now. Because guess what? There's not going to be a choice. There's not going to be disrespect in the kingdom. Because guess what? 
people going to be like, okay, yeah, we seize the ruler and be cast into a pit. Okay, what good is it to find out that way? Read. Psalms 22 and 30. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the most high for the generation. A seed or a family shall serve him, and it shall be counted to the Lord for a generation. Read. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. At the end of all of this, confusion. We must remember that Yeshia shall rule this earth under the Father. There is no other being besides the Father that controls whether you live or die. He will set up his son to rule over the world, and there is no one who can stop this from happening. I don't care what satellites they put up there. I don't care what artificial intelligence they try to make, what type of NASA situation they got. Nothing could stop what's coming from happening. I don't care how much they show it in Independence Day. I don't care how much they show it in War of the Worlds. I don't care what type of programming they try to program the nations with. But when those ships and those ten thousands of ten thousands of saints come and make visitation here on earth, there's nothing that's going to stop the Most High from reigning and his son from taking his rightful rulership on this earth. Nothing. Okay? That's inevitable. That's coming. Whether people will take, will believe it or not, okay? Whether they'll hear or forbear. Psalms 49 and 1. Come on. Hear this, all ye people. Hear this, all ye people. Read. Give ear, all you inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. Mm. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be understanding. Come on. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will open my dark saying upon the harp. Upon the harp. Come on. Wherefore should I fear in the days of evil, when an in iniquity of my heel shall compass me about? Mm. They that trust me trust in their wealth. They that trust in their wealth. And read. boast themselves in the multitude of their riches. Of course, because... This world have set it up that that is the status of security. Money is the status of security. Money's a defense. It's not the status. Okay? It's not what you ascribe to do, and that's your end goal, is to gain money and riches and status and power. It's not going to, guess what? Those that have money and uh, the Bill Gates of hell, and all these people that have made bunkers in the earth, it's not going to help them. Remember, Christ had made us fishers of men. But eventually, those fishers are be going to become hunters. And there's not going to be a bunker in this earth, a reinforced door in this earth that is not going to be broken. No, no, no. You're going to come out of here to be judged. Come in. Come in. We know you hid yourself in the, in the rocks. Come in. There's not going to be one that's hid. Read. None of them can be any means redeem his brother nor give to the most high a ransom for him. Exactly. They can't. The money can't be a savior for his brother. I don't care how much money you make. And think about it. All the people that are in the entertainment industry that have sold their souls to Satan, that have sacrificed kindred and families and friends, there's a judgment for that. And the money that they sacrifice, that they, that they use their families to sacrifice with, the ones that are benefiting off of now, it's not a, it's not a savior to them. It's not going to save them from the judgment. Check that out. Read Psalms 49 and 8. For the redemption of their soul is precious, 
and his seed is forever. Come on. That he should still live forever and see corruption. And not see corruption. And not see corruption. Read. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Exactly. Read. Their inward thought is. What's that, their, wait, hold up. Their inward thought is what? That their houses shall continue forever. Exactly. See, so that's why when you look at the royal families and you look at all those that are making money and follow money and have established, be like, this is the, the Wellington estate. The Wellington estate goes from father to son, father to son, father to son. And see, this is how their name stays in the world so they think forever. Okay, when the most I make this stubble, there will be no Wellington estate. Okay, so they feel like their riches is what make them live forever. And you know what's crazy? Us, us is, is, is Israelites, those that follow the most high. We get sucked into these things because the philosophy sound good. You know, all, you know and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of us been there. You know, all these meetings of finances and, you know, some of us that ever did like multi-level marketing and all that. You go to a conference room, they clapping. Come on. Wealth. Money. Finances. Let's get it. And, and, and the whole zone, everybody be in the zone like, yeah, how do I do this? As if that's the only thing that life is about. Okay? I remember when I was in the financial, you know, industry. And, and, and you know, I would go and I would, you know, write an insurance policy and make my money in the beginning of the, the month. And I'd be like, look, you know, I made four, $6,000. I'd say, like, I'm cool. I'm not working no more. I'm good. Y'all see me on the first of next month, and I'll start booking appointments. You know, my boss would tell me, you're lazy. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm good. My family is good. I want to see my family. Okay, I made my money. I want to go see my family. Well, see, that's the difference. That's the difference between me and you. Because you'll never get rich. I don't want to get rich. I want to make enough money to enjoy my family. Okay, there's a difference here. Okay, you're not going to, listen. But see, all these, these corrupt industries and what, what is taught of men is what sometimes we as people that have never seen money get sucked into. Because keep in mind, Israelites, we've never really seen major money. So when we see money, we don't know how to deal with it. We really don't know how to act. When we see a couple thousand dollars in a short amount of time, okay, that automatically, you know, elicit shopping spree. Okay, this is like, you know what, uh, man, I just, like, how long, like people, listen, you think about it, right? Tax season come in, and I, and I used to hear these astronomical numbers. You know, it'd be a single mother, she got like four kids, right? She'd be like, yeah, I'd be like, how much you get? I got about nine grand back. Okay, two weeks, she's broke. Okay, check to check. I'm like, How? What did you do with it? So I'm like, listen, if you get nine grand every year and you have your children for 18 years, you should just be putting that in, in some savings account for later. That should be a get out of Babylon money. You, you should have no problem getting passports and all that. You should be good, okay? This is what I'm saying. When the children of Israel, see, we have to understand not to envy the sinners and be like them. We have to consider even what nature does. You have a squirrel. You know what they do? When a certain time come and it start getting cold, they start storing their nuts for the winter. They start getting their food and storing it up because they know I'm not going to be able to get this and that. When it's cold, they prepare. 
Everything, that's why the scriptures say the whole world language, the whole world, because everything, the trees know what to do, the squirrels know what to do, the birds know what to do, the grass know what to do, except us. We're the only creation that's out of order. When something comes, we don't know how to deal with it. Guess what? We had that same issue in the wilderness in Egypt. Six day of the week come. We were supposed to take double for our family of manna. Okay, nah, we was too lazy. We take a day's worth. And you know what? On the Sabbath, we like, you know, I'm a little hungry. They eating. You know, hey, how much you got? Double for my family? I'm, I'm good. I got two days worth. Okay, I'm good. You ain't got no extras? All right, cool. But well, there's some man on the ground there. And you know what happened? They were destroyed because of disobedience, because they took things for granted. We have to take these examples of our forefathers and understand they were for our admonishment. They were for our learning and do better with what we have now. If you know better, do better. And guess what? The Most High is teaching us. Just like it says in Genesis 49, he crouched as an old lion. But you know Judah's a lion as well. We know we're young. The leaders in Israel. We'll add a wisdom of an old lion, though. So we're young in the spirit. We're young coming to the understanding. But it still doesn't, it still doesn't make the difference that we don't have the wisdom of the ancients. Okay, when we look at our foreparents before us, they had less information than what we have now. Besides a select few that were shown the secrets of the time. But we have the full record. Ezra's, Genesis to Revelation, the Apocrypha, Enoch. So for us, there's no excuse why we don't know how to prepare properly. And we're leaning on the riches and the things that we've learned within the world. Okay, we got to start to grow within the spirit of the Most High and not operate like the world operates. Go ahead. Psalms 49 and 11. Read. Their inward thoughts is that their houses shall continue forever. Read. And their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. And see, this is the thing. We should have always knew based on study who the oppressors were. They called the lands after their own name. There's no land where you go around, you know, that's Malak, you know, Yashra Allah. This is the land of Malak. We see, they, listen, every place is named after the powers and forces and dark forces that ruled over us, okay? Even Africa, okay? Named after a European, okay? Come on. Nevertheless, man being an honor abideth not. He is like the beast that perish. For their way is their folly, yet their pr 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 prosperity above the sa saying, Salah, mm. like sheep that are laid in the grave, death shall feed on them, mm. and the upright shall have dominion over them in the morning, and their beauty shall consume in the grave from their dwelling. So we idolize the so-called elites and desire the things that they have and try to live a life that was never meant for us in order to obtain those things. Their possessions are cursed. And all those who covet after those things, okay, is cursed as well. It's time to wake up. When we deal with those things that are, 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 are sacrificed unto idols and look to acquire those things, those things have a curse on them. That's why you always see these videos and, you know, a lot of us come into the truth by way of conspiracy theory and videos and 9-11 videos and all that and Illuminati videos and Boulay videos. We watch all that. 
And understand that, look, when you're out there, there's a price you pay to get a certain status. There's a price that you, there's a soul selling situation to reach a certain status. We were never supposed to acquire things like that. Because why? It's just like the commentary say, their possessions are cursed. There's a curse that comes with that. I've acquired this, therefore Satan require this. Do you know for any riches and for any kingdom and any treasure, a sacrifice was made? We're under a testament. Do you know, like the scripture says, the will is not in place to the testator unless the, the person passes. Christ had a will. He had a testament, which is the, the promises that went from Abraham, the Isaac, to Jacob, that went through him to, to come to us. They're in play because Christ has sacrificed himself. There was a blood sacrifice in righteousness for what we're to acquire. In righteousness. Well, guess what? When people ascribe to get those things and riches in the world, guess what? Satan also requires blood. People don't understand that. And they're, and they're on a constant push to get what never, they should have never had. And then realize when, they, when they're waist deep or too deep into it, it's too hard for them to get out. Okay? Just do the research, and I know elders preparing a lesson to deal with this soon. You do a research with all these celebrities. Before they really made it big, there was some horrific death behind them. There was some horrific sacrifice behind them. And you know what's crazy? They just get swept under the rug. I mean, you know, you, 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 have, you have people now, it's like, yo, you forget a person like Jennifer Hudson come from an American Idol situation, right? A little overweight. Listen, she got everything she desired. Riches, fame, slender waist, beauty. But guess what? Whole family was taken out. An entire family. Okay? The price that Satan have, that the sinner get, is high. When Christ was the ultimate sacrifice for the righteous. Okay? And it's like, listen, that's how corrupt the mind is. How, how much sin clouds the mind because you'll kill people that's around you that that you love and that have paved the way for you for some riches to gain a status that the elites have that you were never supposed to have our riches that are coming are greater than that the bible say we we it haven't even entered in their minds the riches that's coming from the kingdom like I was just talking with the brethren. We have no idea what gold looks like. The gold that's on this earth is tainted. It's corrupt with this earth. We don't even know what pure gold looks like. We don't even know what, what the sapphire looks like. You go and look at these diamonds and they say this is VVS cut and all that. But there's a flaw in it. It's, it's very le there's a very small flaw, but it's a little flaw, a minor flaw. So it's about $10,000. Okay, the most highest diamonds, there are no flaws. So the city of, of heaven, the kingdom, is beautiful. Unlike anything we could ever imagine. So to work for these little menial things that are here on the earth, that are corrupted, are not worth missing out on what's coming. Okay, what's coming is great. And great isn't even a word to describe it. Okay, Psalm 7, 73 and 1. Let's, go, let's get it. Truly the Most High is good to Israel. Truly the Most High is good to Yahshua Allah. Read. Even to such are 
even the such as are of a clean heart. Come on. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Mm. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. So listen, David is warning us. And all the riches and everything David had, he said, listen, he said, for I was envious at the foolish. Okay, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, when he seen what, how they were prospering, he was like, man, I mean, I'm king, I'm, I, I'm king over Israel, but the king of Babylon, look, look, at what, look at what's going down here. Even he had to catch himself. Read. Psalm 73 and 4. For there are no bands in their death. See, there are no bands in their death. Read. But their strength is firm. Mm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. So look, he looking at it and, and trying, to, trying to contemplate and analyze the situation. They're not troubled as other men, so they don't have the same issues that you and I have. With struggling from check to check, trying to make it. Trying to do what's right. Look at the elite. You're like, listen, they good. You understand? They, 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 you know, you go to their they houses, their car look like the dealer. Their house look like the dealership. They don't got to worry about nothing. They, eat, they got chefs in their crib. The finest of foods. Right? So, so listen, David seeing the same thing. Okay? He said, they're not troubled as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Meaning, the, when they get sick, they're automatically their money give them a cure. Magic Johnson, when, when, when AIDS was a killer, it was a straight death sentence. Listen, this brother came out looking swole and healthier than anybody else on the earth. Greasy as he want to be. Okay? Came out, all, just, hey, yeah, I'm the magic man. I'm about to deal with the Olympics. A total, a, 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 a total zone, and, 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 and you know, in, in a staged event. But nonetheless, it show you when you got money and power, you can pay your way out of anything. Okay, so this is what, this is what our foreparent was checking out here. He like, they not troubled as other men, okay? Neither are they plagued like other men. Neither do they get sicknesses like other men. What, what's going on? Look at, the, look at the rich. Read. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. You can't tell them nothing. Read. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have no more than heart could wish. Mm. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They speak lawfully, read. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongues walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out up to them. Read. And they say, how doth the Most High know? How doth the Most High know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Listen, I'm going to tell you what knowledge is. You see these green backs here that say within God we trust? That's the God I'm dealing with. That's the mindset they have. While you sitting here praying and all that, I'm getting money. I don't know how many songs and all that money. Money, money, women, cars, and clothes. That's about 90% of every song that was ever released in the history of music. Okay? They, they have one of those combinations in the songs. It's a reoccurring theme. Read. Behold, these are ungodly who prosper in the world. They're ungodly who prosper in the world. And they increase in riches. And they increase in riches. Read. Verily I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been played and chastened every morning. Mm. If I say I will speak... Thus behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. 
until I went into the sanctuary of the Most High, and then understood therein. I therein. Exactly. So he was like, listen, when I looked at this, it was too painful for me to think about how our people are struggling and how they're getting over and their lives is cool. Okay? But then when he went into the sanctuary, just like we all are in the sanctuary and understood their end, it all made sense. And it made leaving here so much easier. Going back home and, and, and see, this is what give you the strength to go through what you got to go through. This is what give you the fuel when, you know, your boss is your oppressor and you don't really feel like doing all that until you find a way through the most high to create something of your own. But this is what gives you the fuel to go from point A to point B. Because you know they're in. You're like, okay, I see, my, I see the suffering I'm going through. But guess what? I'd rather suffer in righteousness than to live clean in this world in unrighteousness and suffer the penalty at the end of unrighteousness. See, it's all worth it, brothers and sisters. The little tests, the little things that we go through now is worth it. And you know what? The Most High know us better than we know ourselves. How is it and why is it that we don't have the finances right now that we desire to have? You know why? Because there's growing within the body of Christ that we need. There's strengthening and wisdom that we need. You know why? Because if you give resources and riches to a babe, because then people will look, right, and they'll use different people as examples and say, well, Abraham was rich. Okay, Abraham had substance. Christ and the disciples had a ship. Yes, but they were of full age. They were mature. They knew what to do with the finances. Okay, they knew to build the body of Christ. They knew to go and do the work. You know what happens? We give, listen, you give, you give a lot of us brown people some money now. The first thing we do is get in the car we've always wanted or the house we've always wanted or the pair of Jordans we never had. Instead of saying, you know what? I got some finances here. How could this be a blessing to the most high? How could this build the kingdom? How could this strengthen the body of Christ? There's a lot of time why we, we stop because the most high know our hearts. He searcheth the reins. He know. Because a lot of time we get what we want, we'll be out. And it'll be our reason why we sin it. Okay? It'll be, the, it'll be the sole reason why we just stop dealing with the most high. Oh, man, well, you know, I, I, the only day I could come, I just got this house. You know, hey, hey, Bishop, you know I just got this house. And the only day I could come, the contractors could come is on the Sabbath. It, 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 some grace for that. I watched the lessons at home. No. If it's going to be a stumbling block, it needs to be removed. Anything that stops you from worshiping and dealing with the Most High, guess what it is? An idol. Okay? Now, listen. Because that's, the sinner can't get over themselves. When it say envy not the sinner, sometimes you got to understand what idol, the core of idol worship is. It's anything that you put before the Most High. You can put yourself before the Most High. I'm just not feeling it today. What you mean you're not feeling it today? The Most High said, listen, these are my feasts. Holy convocations. You don't have the right to pick and choose what you want to do on the Sabbath. The Most High commanded us to do it. He's our creator. He's our father. Okay? What's sin? Transgression of the what? So the Most High said it and made it law. Anything outside of that is what? It's sin. 
And see, we're held accountable once we know that. Because why? For in times of ignorance, the most I wink. We didn't know that at one point. But now we know it. So when we deal with it, Christ's sacrifice wasn't for us to willfully sin. To look at a situation and say, you know what? I know it's the Sabbath, but I'm, I'm just not feeling it. That's will, willful. Christ didn't sacrifice himself for that. Like the scriptures say, he that sinned willfully, after he received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. You can't do what you want to do because you feel like, okay, well, you know, the most I know and grace, grace isn't for that. Grace is for the sins that you commit that you're not aware of. Okay, you can't stretch the most high's grace as a rubber band and think that the blessings and everything you pray for is going to come on you. No, on the contrary, the chastisement is coming swift. Because we are judged by every idle word we speak. Okay? So it took the reality of the word and the most high's judgments to break this envying of the wicked in this case. The word provides us with the wisdom to see through Satan's tricks, which have been the same for generations. Yet, even in the truth, we ignore the word and allow Satan to do the same things to us continually. Okay? Let's get Isaiah 13 and 11. And what? We'll and I will punish the world for their evil. And I will punish the world for their evil. Come on. And the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And will lay low the naughtiness of the terrible. You know how the scriptures say, it tell you the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. See, when you get into the mode that, you know, I'm going to tell you one of the most dangerous statements you could ever say in life. I don't think the most I would. Don't ever say that. If you say that, you're in trouble. I don't think the most I would have a prop. He has a problem. You can't speak for the most High. He's already spoken. You want to see what he got a problem with? Go into the scriptures. And find out what the Most High said. You can't speak for the Father. I don't think. No, 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 no. No, no, no. You, you, you're, none of us are worthy enough to speak for the Father. I don't think it would be a problem. I don't see a problem. It doesn't matter what you see. What did he say? Go ahead. Isaiah 13 and 12. Come on. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the, than the golden wedge of Orpher. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the, of the Lord of hosts, and in the days of his fierce anger. So you know how the earth sits? It does sit on an angle, on an axis, as we learn in the academy. The whole world ministers to the earth, but the earth still sits on an axis and wobbles a little bit. In the day of the Most High's fierce anger, he's going to knock it off its course. When Christ come, that trumpet blast, and he enter in the atmosphere, he says, therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall be removed. Out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and the day of his fierce anger. People are going to know the most I real them when, when this place, it, it, listen, then you're really going to know. See, and this is, this is also another zone, how you realize that the earth is not revolving around the sun. Be 
Because they, when, the, when the earth is removed out of its place and moves, we're all going to feel that. Okay? It's, 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 going to be, it's going to be a serious movement on the face of the earth when the Most High moves the earth out of its place. The earth been, it's been in its place since the, since the creation. It's been here. Come on. And every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Wait, read 14 now. Start at 14. And it shall be as the chase and row. Read. And, and as the sheep of no man's talketh up, they shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Read. Every one that is found shall be thrust through, and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Come on. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Mm. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them. The Medes against them. The Medes and the Persians. What shall not regard silver for as for gold. They shall not delight in it. Exactly. And we talk about the prophecies of Iran and all that. Okay, when, when their anger is turned towards America, it's not going to be turned back. If, if you look in those Medes and Persians strike and say, look, we're not taking it back. No, we're slighted. It's a wrap. There's no, there's, listen, just trust and believe. There's not going to be no peace talks. There's not going to be no diplomacy, no finances that's going to get this place out of the trouble they've gotten themselves in. That's prophecy. Read. Their bowels also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Mm. Their eyes shall not spare children. And they don't care. They're not worried about, you know, Little Jojo that just been born on New Year's Day in America. They could care less. When their anger is kindled on these Medes and Persians, it's not going to be taken back. Read. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans, excellently shall be as when the Most High overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Straight fire, brimstone, and smoke. Thermonuclear destruction, straight annihilation of a land. Stubble, to be no more. Sulfur. Read. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall... It shall never be what? Inhabited. It shall never be what? Inhabited. It. Listen, once this place is destroyed, it will never be lived in again. There is no coming back to America. That's why when you read in Revelation, it says they're going to lament. They're going to cry, which we went over last night. They're going to they see the utter destruction and realize that this place will never be what it was. Utter destruction, brothers and sisters. Read. Neither shall be dwelt in the gener end from generation to generation. Mm. Neither shall the Ar Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall... The shepherds make their fall there. So if we make the mistake to joining ourselves spiritually with the beast system and Babylon, we will eventually fall by the sword, as the scriptures say. So if we feel like and we make this when we know we're supposed to be like pilgrims, our home, and feel like, you know what? Listen, the most high is going to deliver me out of my trouble. When we went into the scripture last night, talk about some deliver yourself, O Zion, from the daughter of Babylon. 
if your hope is in this place, you set up for destruction. Okay? You like those people that was in Sodom and Gomorrah that loved that place more than they loved the Most High. And, and guess what? They sulfur to this day. And guess what, brothers and sisters? It doesn't matter if one doesn't believe it. Is that my words? Absolutely not. Give Romans 3. Romans the third chapter. It doesn't matter if one doesn't believe it or not. Okay, well, I don't believe that. Okay, it, it just, it, you know, that's just figuratively. You know, the same people said, people said that in Sodom. When those angels was making a censor, is there one righteous? Is there five righteous? Is there ten righteous? Right? Watch this. Get Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? So what if, So here's the thing, though. What if some people didn't believe in the prophecies of the Most High and said, you know what? Well, I don't believe it's going to go down that way. You don't believe it's going to go down that way? Romans 3 and 3, read it. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the most high without effect. So because you don't believe, is that going to make the fact that the judgment that the most high have wrote on the daughter of Babylon of none effect? Read. The most high forbid, yea. God forbid, yea. Let the most high be true. Let the most high be true. But every man a liar. I don't care what anybody tell you. It is what the scriptures say it is. Okay, somebody can tell you a whole bunch of this and that and fill us up and explain it away. It's what the scriptures say. Okay. You know how we know what's going to happen? Ecclesiastics one and nine. How do we know? How do we know that this destruction is going to happen? Ecclesiastics one and nine. How do we know? The things that have been. The things that have been like Sodom and Gomorrah. It read, is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done. Exactly. So if it already happened and we see the most highest destruction on what a land is like when it's full of sodomy. It's full of wickedness. It's full of mischief. Then we got to automatically know what was done is already going to be. How do we know that even further? Go to Malachi 3.6. How do we know this? How do we know that the Most High is going to rain fire on this place? How do we know? With surety. With certainty. Malachi 3.6. For I am the most high, I change not. He does what? I change not. The most high doesn't change. Read. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob. Who are the sons of Jacob? We are. So therefore, you sons of Jacob, read. Are not consumed. So we don't die within the wickedness of the nations. So the most high have stayed consistent from the beginning of time, if you want to know what happened to a land that was full of wickedness and violence and sodomy and evil, all you have to do is look in the Bible to find out what the Most High did. He destroyed it, wiped it off the face of the earth. Pre-flood. Okay? What was the world? Wicked. Nasty, filthy, disgusting, all that. Fallen angels running rampant. You know what the most I did? Destroyed it. Sodom. Wicked. Straight sulfur. So if we know what the most I did, if we want to live 
as the chosen seed of Jacob, then we must understand to get ourselves prepared, watch and pray like Christ said, and get ourselves ready to, to be able to be righteous, to stand up before him in the day of judgment. It's coming. And we got to know that with a surety. Just like the scriptures say, we got to run not as one beat of the air. But you got to know why you're running. So you can obtain. Okay. If we make the mistake of joining ourselves spiritually with the beast system and Babylon, we will eventually fall by the sword. We must begin to purify our thoughts and learn again because the judgment is far closer than when we first heard the warnings. Okay? If you heard, if you've ever heard the, 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 the judgment and revelation in a church, okay, believe me, what you're hearing now is way closer than it was then. Okay, if it was real then, it's really real now. Okay, all that have to happen is for the most high to make the decree. And, 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 and for the hearts and minds, just like, listen, just like it was in, 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 in the land of Pharaoh, when Pharaoh hardened his heart and it says the most high put that on him, Okay, when the Most High put the spirit on, on Iran because of this, 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 this place wickedness, it's not going back. Okay? It's like the scriptures say, it's like a, a woman having birth pains. When that child's coming out, I don't care any woman that know when, that had a baby, you can't hold it in. When that water break and them labor pains come and that baby come down that birth canal, you can't take it back. That baby coming out, one way or the other, that baby's coming out, okay? That's what's going down. Let's get Isaiah 14 and 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. Mm. For I will rise up against them, saith the Most High of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name the re and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Most High. Come on. I will also make it a possession for the, the bitterin and pools of water. I will sweep it with the besom of destruction, mm -hmm. saith the Most High of hosts. Come on. The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely also I have thought, so shall I so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, purposed it. so shall it stand. So when the most I thought it, he said it, he purposed it, it shall stand. So I remember I remember back in the the eighties, right? watching a movie, uh, The Seven Signs, right? And I remember it was all about some child being born. And, it, you know, if the child's one way, the world's going to go this way. If the child's that way, it's going to go. And every movie you see, it's like when they used to drop them back then, it's like if the world changes their tune and repent, that the judgment will never happen. Okay, that's not scripture. See, Hollywood... And all those that are out there are complicit with the agenda of making people feel like what's written in the scriptures is not going to come to pass. If the Most High said it, it shall be done. You could, you, you could take that to the bank. Okay? So wake out of your delusion because Babylon is what? Already done. The most I spoke it. This place is just on borrowed time. It's already finished. Okay. So there's no way knowing the prophecies of the, of the most high 
that mentally and spiritually you wouldn't begin to prepare. It doesn't make sense. Because if you're called to believe in the Bible in any way, you know that this place is already finished. It's just on the most high's time. And that don't mean getting a full panic. It's a fire sale. I must do this. No, that means that you must prepare yourself. And part of preparing yourself is doing the work. You know why? Because Christ is an austere man. When he come, he going to be like, where's my usury? So it's no good leaving a place if you haven't done the work. It's no sense going and thinking you're fleeing the wrath to come and you haven't built any talents. Okay? And you have nothing to present before the Most High in his son. Okay, the Most High has given us grace and space now to do the work. Okay? So live your life for the eternal kingdom to come because the kingdom of the beast is already fallen. You just may have forgotten it. You have to endure just a little bit longer. Okay? Understand that Christ already got the victory. Okay? Isaiah 64 and 4. For since the beginning of the world. For since when? The beginning of the world. Since 2000 and a lie. The beginning of the world. Since the new covenant. The beginning of the world. Read. Men have not heard nor perceived by the ear. Neither have the eye seen. O God, beside thee, have he have prepared for him that waited for him. Since the beginning of the world. This, listen, you know how you throw a, a party? And you might prepare the party like a year in advance. And you, you, you like, yo, wait till y'all see what I got prepared. We, we set money aside. We got decorations. We got a beautiful venue. We got, a, we got the best DJ. We got the best music mix. Oh, man, everything's going to be great. Well, the most time been, through Christ have been preparing a kingdom for us since this world was framed. Okay, I'm going to say that again. The Most High have been preparing the glory that's to come since the foundation of the world, since the very beginning. Perfecting. Fashioning. Making the beauty of the Most High in its strength, in its excellency. Man can't even fathom what's coming. Read. Thou meetest him that rejoiceth and worketh righteousness. Those that remember thee in thy ways, behold, thou art worth. For we have sinned in those in continuance and we shall be saved. We shall be saved. Not we're saved by grace now. Filled with the Holy Spirit and fire. Oh Lord, I'm already in the kingdom. Wrong. You, it's he that endureth to the end. The same shall be saved. Shall be saved. Okay, nobody, nobody can claim right now that they're saved, E.D., past tense. Because guess what? By your actions, you can still lose your eternal soul. Okay? Any teacher that teach you otherwise is a liar. You have not received your change. You have not sat before the Father in the throne. Okay? There is no false sense of, Okay, I sit there, and, and, and because I believe in his name is Yeshia, I'm in the kingdom. La, ah. Faith without works is what? You must put your hand to the plow. Christ said anybody that put their hand to this plow and look back is not fit for this kingdom that's to come. You can't look back. Can't, you can't say, 
okay, well, you know what? I believe, and, and the most I've been baptized, oh, man, I'm good. Okay, what are you going to do with that wisdom? What are you going to do with the Holy Spirit that was endowed? What are you going to do with the power that was endowed on high? Are you going to sit idle on it, or are you going to put it to work? That's what's required out of us, that we present this body, this vessel, as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Come on. Isaiah 64 and 6. But we are all as an unclean thing. And check that out. I don't care how much you say you're filled with the Holy Spirit. All of us. The elders, the deacons, the bishops, all of us, members, okay, we are all an unclean thing. Read. Are as filthy rags. And are what? Are as filthy rags. And Read we, it again. And all are. And are as filthy rags. You miss righteousness again. Our Keep righteousness it. are as filthy rags. Exactly. So all the good you feel like you're doing, okay, is nothing. You got to keep doing the work. You know how people be like, well, I did this and I did that. I need to do this. No, the Bible say not to get weary and well-doing. You got to continue. You got to keep working. You got to build his kingdom feverishly. You got to keep establishing what the most I have. It can't be a thing where, okay, I need a, no, what break? You get a break when the kingdom come. That's when the peace comes. But we must continue. There is no quitting on the most high. All our righteousness are as of filthy rags. So there's nothing to this date that you have did that was good enough. That's worthy of, okay, you get an automatic pass in the kingdom. Myself included. So we must work diligently as if it's our last, okay, to get into this kingdom. Remember, the scriptures say the righteous would scarcely make it in. Read. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name, that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. For thou hast hid thy face from us, and hast consumed us because of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art our potter, and we all are the work of thy hand. And we should understand that. See, that's the importance. When you decide to say, you know what, I'm putting away my flesh and I'm following the most high, you have to understand you now have to follow the potter because we're the clay. Do you, like, do you understand how many times the angel of the presence have recorded how many times we said the Lord's Prayer? Every time without fail. So when we say his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we confess continually that we're, our steps are ordered by the most high. Now, like the scriptures say, every idle word that a man shall speak shall come up in the day of judgment. Now, do you believe that? Or not? Or are we just saying that idly? That when I say the Most High shall order my steps daily, his will be done with me. Is that something that we follow? We have to watch, therefore, and pray and understand the moment that we're in. And not take it for granted. Okay? Come on. 
So let me read this. We have an eternal kingdom to obtain that our imaginations can't even perceive yet. We look to obtain all manners of confusion which are wasteful and unfruitful in matters of eternal life. Let's get Matthew 4 and 8. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain. Talk about Christ. He had just got done fasting, right? And here go the devil. Just like anything else, we know the purpose of the Most High on our lives and what to do. And the minute that we get purpose, here come the evil spirits. Let me tell you something. Those that haven't gotten baptized, that, trust me, like, like, like my dear brother and Elder Gabar told me, it's not going to get better, it's going to get worse. That was the realest thing somebody could ever tell me. Okay, because the spiritual attacks, they don't come, okay, until you a threat. Okay, till you a threat to tear down Satan's kingdom, okay, then you know where the spiritual attack is. You have not been tested until you get and follow the truth and give your life to Christ once and for all. Okay, you don't know what a test look like. Okay. Because as it says, I believe in the testament of Reuben, every evil spirit attacketh Israel. Every evil spirit's against Yashrala. Every evil spirit, every demonic force, anger, lust, sin, greed, lasciviousness. You, you name it, okay, you go to the water, you say it, it's coming. And people are like, I, I didn't know the truth was like this. You, you, you thought it was all peaches and lollipops? The Most High gave his son, and it said it pleased him when he was bruised, when he was beaten. He went through the chastisement. The servant is not greater than his master. Okay. We got to be faith. We got to understand. We got to face what our foreparents face, what Stephen face, with what, what, what Isaiah face, death. And follow the Most High with all that we have, understanding that our life is hid in Him, in Christ. Okay, this walk, this, this walk isn't for the half-hearted, for the ill-fated. This is for those who stand for the truth and for the most high. This is for those that have been chosen, not just called, but chosen. Okay? To go through and be an example for the world. Okay? Okay? Let's go back to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Come on. And showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. So Satan showed Christ everything he could ever want. He like, look, you could have anything you want. Just take the deal. Read Matthew four and nine and save unto him all these things will I give thee. If thou wilt fall down and worship me. And we just talked about that. Let me tell you something. Everybody that have hit a status point, they all talk about that. In the, in the industry and all that, the casting couch, the room, the black rooms. What if they been, Listen, they go in there and that's the same thing. Listen, we'll give you everything you want. If you just worship this guy that's, that's back here on this wall. You just worship the, the father that we dealing with. See, Christ didn't take the deal. He knew his father was greater. And trust me, he knew what he was facing. Christ was facing death. He was facing the sins of the world being put on his back. He didn't take the deal. He had, listen, Christ had an easy out. And he was shown what he was going to receive. 
Okay, we listen. We when we when when you see the people on earth take what they they don't even know what they're gonna get. They just be they just be dealing with it with empty promises. Oh, we're gonna make you famous. We're gonna put your name in lights. You're gonna be fam- You're gonna be on MTV. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. We be like, yeah, yeah, sound good. I'm gonna be like one of the greats. Yeah. And then and then you end up like Tiger. Okay, like, what's up with that? If people don't know who they're gonna be. They don't know if they're gonna be the one that falls short. Okay, because they don't realize there's levels to it. The deeper you go, the more you have to sacrifice. The higher up you go, the more you have to give. Satan always requires. See, but listen, the most high is righteous. He gave one sacrifice for all. See? Satan want more, more, and more, and a little bit more. Suck you in. You get deeper. He wants more. Until you're wasted away and you have nothing. That's how you, you know, when you see somebody that Satan have utterly destroyed. They start to deal with their vices. They get hooked on something. And they just, they, get, they keep getting destroyed until they're nothing. That, that, that might have been, that, that might have been the person you voted for, you know, valedictorian in the class, most likely to succeed. They see you 10 years later, you see them, they're like, man, you never aged. You see, you like, man, uh, how's your mom doing? (laughs) There's a penalty, brothers and sisters, for sin. There's a weighing down of sin. And guess what? It could be seen. Why did Yeshia look like he did? Hunchback, unibrow, very sorrowful, very pitiful, horrible man to look at. Because he was bearing all the sins of the world. And as the more sins of the world that he bore, all of, he, he just kept looking worse and worse. No wonder why when Thomas seen him, he didn't recognize him. He was glorified when he seen him. He like, man, it, Yeshia, is that you? Oh, that's what you look like. But the man that was walking with all the sin on him, listen, they would, listen, like the scriptures say, he was nobody would desire him. You've never seen a man walk this earth with all the sins of the we only see people with their own sins on them. You understand? You only see somebody that dealt with their own sin, you know, that have lost their teeth and, 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 you know, and, and, and are a shadow of themselves, what they used to be, and are frail and skinny. That's just their vices. But imagine what Christ was dealing with, dealing with all the sins of the entire world and what he looked like. The man that died for us. Come on. Then say if you're shy unto him, get thee hence, Satan. He said, get behind me, Satan. Get thee hence. For, Go ahead. For it is written. What did he hit him with? Thou shalt worship the most high thy power, and him only shall thou serve. He said, listen, thou shalt have no other gods before the most high. He hit him right with the script. He's like, if you don't, Satan, if you, you twerp, if you don't get behind me, the Bible tells, thou shalt have no other gods before my father. Get behind me. I'm not taking this. Go ahead. Then the devil believed him. He left Saudi. And behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Exactly. 
And, 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 and listen, then the comfort came and the angels ministered to Christ. So Christ re rejected the perversions of this world and all the foolish things that come with it and obtain the kingdom. If we claim to follow Christ, we are expected to do the same. The question is, do you really believe? That's a good question. Okay? Because belief is just not in your mind. It's an action. As, as I stated earlier, faith without works is dead. If you really believe, you're going to put your belief into action. Okay? Matthew 5 and 11. Come on. Blessed are ye when men shall revive you. So blessed are you when men shall revile you. When they say you're crazy. When they say you shouldn't be in this situation. Blessed are you when men shall revile you. And persecute you. And persecute you. And shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. For the most high in Christ's sake. Okay, because this is what's going to happen, brothers and sisters. If you haven't already dealt with it, it's coming. You go to church when? On the who? Calling on what? What's his name? You wearing all white? This don't sound right. See, this is what I don't understand. You tell somebody, they say, what, you wear, what, what do you wear to church? Oh, well, you know, we wear, all, we wear all white, right? That sound like a cult. I'd be like, did you read the book of Revelation? Where they all lined out in white robes? And, and, and they all got their heavenly clothes on and, and everybody clean and white and... And it is what it is. Like, what scripture are you reading? But guess what? It's going to come because you know why? It's contrary to what the world looked like. But guess what? Christ's doctrine and what Christ did was contrary to what the world was dealing with then. When, when men was reviling him. But it says, blessed are you when that happens. Read. Blessed are ye when men shall revive you and persecute you mm. and shall say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. Read. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. See what it say? It say when that stuff happened, rejoice. That don't say go and fight and, 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 and you know, even in certain points. Oh, I got to open the scripture and correct them. No. You got to understand, you got to be like, you know what? Thawada Ahaya. For making, for, for choosing me to be worthy enough to deal with the same sufferings as my Savior. I'm, I'm, I'm not even worthy of, listen, I'm not even worthy of this insult. <laughs> Are you kidding me? They call Christ worse. Okay. It's just like when they when they were saying stuff, you know, on the blog talk. And Elder was just thanking him. He was like, oh, thank you. Thank you. You know. Because they said worse to Christ. That only lets you know you in the line of doing the work. Okay, read. Rejoice and, okay, for great is your reward in heaven, for so perse persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Exactly, they, prof they, they persecuted Isaiah. They persecuted all the prophets that came. John the Baptist, so on and so forth. Look at, the, look, at, look at the end of what the world would say, that the terrible end that they came to. They came to a glorious end. They was faithful unto death because they persecuted the prophets before us. Read. Yea, are the salt of the earth, 
But if the salt have lost his savior. So we're the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor. Read. Wherewith shall it be salted? Wherewith shall it be salt? We're if, the flavor of the earth. If we've lost, and see, these are the things that we, under, we have to understand. Just like, you know, when the brothers and sisters was coming in and we praising the most high and we giving it up for them. We're the salt of the earth. We're the flavor. We, listen, those elements are things we've always had. If the salt loses savor, how is it salt? We got the truth, brothers and sisters. We got the spirit. That's why the, the scripture tell you the time is, has come and now is that true worshipers must worship, worship the Father in spirit and in truth. At one point in our walk with Christ, we only had one aspect. We had the spirit. But now we have both. Come on. It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast down and to be trodden under foot of men. Come Ye on. We are the light of the world. We, you, are, are the, the light, light of, of the, the world. world. Come on. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Exactly. Neither do men light a candlestick, uh, light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Exactly. So we should, listen, we should be known and respected and understood for who we are. Do you understand? I, there was a sister that came in yesterday. That, see, that, that came in, checked the class out for a little, enrolled, and was like, yo, why is he like that? He was like that at work. Why he ain't changed? Shouldn't he be a certain way he teaching? No. You should be known of your works no matter where you go. You should be about your father's business no matter where you are. Respectful. Within the spirit of the most high, but still known. Listen, at the end of the day. It's our faithfulness to the most high. That's going to prove whether we're worthy or not. Okay, read. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Exactly, because it's not about you. It's nothing, it's, 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 you, we got to get out of our own skin. It's not about us. It's about Christ. It's about the Most High. Read. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets, I am com not come to destroy, but to fulfill. But to fulfill, to do everything that the prophets prophesy of Christ. Read. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass one jolt or one tittle, shall it no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And we know that the world is not yet finished, this world. So there's no law that the Most High put in that's righteous and lawful for us to do that's done away with. Read. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm. and shall teach men so. And shall teach men to do so. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Nobody is ascribing to be that. Nobody want to be the least in the kingdom of heaven. You're going to teach men to not do the laws of the Most High. Okay, no. You will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. Nothing. Read. But whosoever shall do and teach them. Shall what? But whosoever shall teach. Shall, shall do, do and, and teach. teach them. See, the it's two things. You can't just teach the law and walk away from it. You have to do and teach it. Okay, read. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Exactly. 
So without those that speak the truth of Christ and the laws of the Most High, the world would be in full darkness. If we all envy the sinner, then where would the light go? Somebody has to be brave enough to stand firm until the end so that all generations have the opportunity for the truth. Watch this now, one of my favorite parables. Matthew 13, chapter, verse 18. Parable of the seed sower here. Hear ye therefore the parable. And let me let me set this set this stage before we, we entered we, we, we enter in here. I always warn the brethren and the sisters here. The elders always warn. We talk about social media, we talk about all this stuff, and I always put the, the warning out. Be mindful who you give your ear to. Because no matter who you feel like you're giving an ear to by default, they become your teachers. Okay? The Bible says that you should no longer be babes tossed to and fro with every wind and doctrine. Okay? No matter what you look at, when you lend your ear to something, that person that's teaching you is planting a seed. Whether for righteousness or unrighteousness. I need y'all to understand. I'm going to be clear. That's why you can't go and gather information from here, from this, from that, from this. No, you stay under the doctrine you're under. Respect your teachers and follow that. Okay? When you gather from this, 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 this gathering of folks, this gathering of folks, these people, this bishop, this guy, listen, you're all over the place. Okay? And understand that there are seeds planted one way or the other. Okay? Now listen to this parable here, and it's going to give you some more understanding here. Come on. Matthew 13, 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Mm. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom. And understand it not. And they don't understand it. They, they can't. They can't quantify it, right? And you tell them who they are, what the prophecy of the children of Israel are, what their purpose is in life. Okay, you direct them, and they just don't understand it. Here's, here's, here's what category they fall under. Read. Then cometh the wicked one. And then the wicked one comes. So you just said, listen, the Sabbath is the day of rest, y'all. Right? And then somebody that's of the devil come in and say, you know what? That's not truth. You know why? Because Jesus rose on Sunday. And the scripture don't even say that. Okay? When they went up on the first day of the week, the, 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 the stone was already removed. Christ been gone. Okay? In the midst of the week. You look at that word there in week, it's sabbaton, between the Sabbaths. But that's another teaching for another day. But the bottom line is Christianity have, believe, have put a belief on a day and, and have created a doctrine on something that's not even in the scripture. Okay? So when you hear the word of the kingdom, Understand it not. And when the wicked one come, read. Then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sowed in his heart. You know why? Because initially what was told to the person, it made sense. Initially what the person heard, they was like, you know what? This sounds like the truth. Man, I, I see seven days a week. Okay. I could understand. Wait, they took me to a calendar. I looked at the calendar. Sunday is on the far left. It's the first day of the week. Okay. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to go ask my pastor. Well, my pastor says, okay, what did the most I say? Is your pastor above the most high? You see what we just read before? If somebody would, would take these commandments and, and, and teach them not to do so, they'll be called the least in the kingdom. How could, you, how could you read that scripture and then teach somebody to not do it? Okay. What did the Most High say? Forget what man said. Remember, it was the Pharisees that was teaching the doctrines and commandments of men. Making it up as they go along. You can't make the scripture up as you go along. Read. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that Wait, no, finish that scripture now. And catch it away. All right, I'm going to go back. Matthew 13, 19. Come on now. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth not, mm. then cometh the wicked one. Then the wicked one come. And catcheth away that which was sowed in his heart. This is he that, this is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. That receiveth seed by the wayside. Read. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places. But he that receiveth seed in stony places. The same as he that heareth the word. Uh-huh. And anon with the joy receiveth he, it. He, he get excited, right? He hear the truth. Yeshai is his name. Ahai is his name. I get that. The Native Americans. Hi, uh, hi. He's all he's all in. He got his feathers. He got his fringes. Oh, he, he, he in there. He got his borders of blue. He a nine with joy. You can't tell this person nothing. That's why you must, anybody when you receive the truth, although it's a beautiful and joyful thing, you still must have temperance in receiving it. Because we can all get excited for a time. We can all get joyful for a minute. And it's great, just like, just like a relationship, just like a marriage when it's new. But what happens when trouble comes? That's what defines how much you believe in something. How much you're behind something when the issues come. How much are you willing to stick it out and continue in it and see the end of it? Come on. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh... No, you, go back to 20. you jumping around. Go back to 20. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and a nun with joy receiveth it. And read 21. Yet have he not rooted in himself. See, he wasn't really ready, or she wasn't really ready. They didn't have root in themselves. They wasn't secure in what they believed. They really didn't study to show themselves approved. They weren't ready. And you know what? A lot of, uh, you know, that's why we stress the importance of baptism and the time it takes to get ready. Because a lot of people will try to rush it and not even be secure with the understanding of the Most High. And then when they come into something they don't understand, because they're not secure with themselves, here's what happens. Keep read it. Yet have yet have he not rooted in himself, but but endureth but endureth for a while. So you see him in the body of Christ. They be in church for a while. They come. They be with their family. They stay for a little while. For when tribulation or persecution for arises. For when trouble come and persecutions come. Okay, now. When, when, when the family issues mount, when the bill issues mount, when the trouble come, what happens? Because of the word, by and by. Because of the word, by and by, they're what? He is offended. They find a, find a problem with the doctrine. They find a problem with the teacher. They find a problem with the elder. They find a problem with the church. Why they can't follow anymore. Because of the word, by and by, they're offended. Not because of the teacher. 
Not because of what it is, because guess what? That was what brought them in here in the first place. That's what got them as far as they got in the first place. But all of a sudden, now because of the word by and by, they're offended. So now they look at it, look at a, 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 they strain at a gnat to find a crevice, to make an out of why they need to go back in the world. And it wasn't that great in the beginning. See, I told you. I told you. Okay. You keep trusting in man. I told you. You know what the end of that is? Nothing. Utter darkness. Okay. Beware of wolves in sheep's clothing. I'm going to tell you because, listen, you always got to be leery of somebody that mounts all the problems for you without any solutions. Well, see, I told you that was wrong. That was wrong. You should have been watching this from the beginning. You should have been doing this. I told you all you had to do is watch. Okay, you're saying that. What's your solution now for my salvation? What's what's okay? Great. Okay, you, you've pointed out all the things and magnified all the things that were wrong. Okay, now that I understand that and you've taught me and you've showed me, what's the light? Now light my path. Oh, brother and sister, I, I was just showing you what was wrong. I, I was just saying. You see what I'm saying? I, no, I don't. Explain to me, now Now, show me where I'm supposed to walk in. Where am I supposed to gather? Where am I supposed to do Leviticus 23? Where am I supposed to fill the law, fulfill the law of the Most High? Where am I supposed to do what Christ told me to do now? Now that you tell me to remove myself from the only thing that was helping me, how do I fix myself? See, if you abide in the doctrine of Christ, you know when you're speaking to a straight demon. Okay? Because he wasn't securing himself and rooted, he was able to just go somewhere. And, when, and, when, and, that, and listen, he endured for a while, and when tribulation and persecution, persecution ariseth, because of the word by and by, he was offended. Read. Matthew thirteen twenty two. Come on now. He also that received seed among the thorns. Among the what? Among the thorns. Among the thorns. Is he that heareth the word. You hear the word. And the care of this world. And listen, now you start thinking about everything that the word of the most high is going to take away. Which you can't do. I can't do this no more. I can't do that no more. Well, what about this? Well, I mean, can't I just get, I mean, just a little bit more? What about my get-togethers? What, what about this? I can't do this. Oh, man. Dang. The cares of this world come in, and what happens? And the deceitfulness of riches and choke the, the word. And guess what? The deceitfulness of riches, if I make this choice to do this, and do that, then even financially, I won't be able to excel like I be like like I would excel. I mean, really, I mean, is, is the most high like this? He don't want me like this, do he? I'm gonna tell you, we got some when when you come to follow the most high, you got some soul searching to do. Okay. You got some real look in the mirror dealing with yourself things to come to. Read. No, you go ahead. But because deceitfulness of riches of oh, this and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. And he become it chokes the word out of him. Because the deceitful root, and he become unfruitful. You know why you come? Because, because you can't even be used. How can one be used if they're not here? 
How can one be used if when the most high's work need to be done, you always got to do something else? You got to make a decision whether you're going to follow the most high or follow mammon. You got to make a decision. Okay, as if the most high isn't great and he can make sure that he fulfill your needs either way. You think our father doesn't know our issues before we even come to him? But you know why we be stuck in the rut we in? Because he does know our heart. And we really don't desire what we think we asking for. Because the most high give you a solution. He'll give you a way out. But it's, it's whether you want to take it or not. Or whether you feel like the solution that's in your way or the solution that the most high is giving you, whether you feel like that's beneath you or not. No, the most high going to give you, he's going to give you solutions. But I'm going to tell you what. There will be no excuses on the day of judgment. None. Read. But he that received seed into the good ground. Now watch this. This is, this is how you want to receive seed. He that received seed in good ground. Now what do you do if you were uh, uh, receive seed in good ground? Read it. Is he that heareth the word. You first thing is you hear. So you listen, you were a student of the word, of what the most High was dropping, right? Read. And understand it. And you do what? And understand it. You know what take a long time for you to hear and understand? Everybody be so much in a rush to come in and be like, I just want to do the work. They don't even learn. How could you do the work if you haven't heard and understood? So you telling me you understand it to the point now where fully you can relay it to somebody that just doesn't understand this from a can of paint. Honestly. You have to hear it and understand it for yourself. Now a lot of us understand the word enough to, to be for us, for what we believe in. But when you, act, when you understand it fully is when you're able to just Without effort, talk to somebody else about it. Now you understand. It's built in you. So the first, the first things is for somebody heard it and now they understand it. Read. Which also bear fruit. Which also do what? Bear fruit. Which also do what? Bear fruit. So you're going to see somebody that whether the seed was on good ground or not because they're going to bring forth fruit. There is no I understand work, the, the, word, the word of the Most High, and you go and you're not bringing forth fruit. Really, if you, that means you don't understand it. Okay? You don't understand nothing. That's when we have to understand I got to get past myself. And I got to go in a position where I need to be taught again and learn. So that I could get and learn how to bear fruit. Okay, how do I, how, you know, everybody in here, here's the thing. Everybody in here have the potential to build a church just like this. Okay. Even if you wasn't called to be a preacher or teacher. Just by the light that's within you. Okay? The most high is not capped. Okay? Read. And bring it forth some a hundredfold. See? And then listen. You may not bring a number like this or a number like that or a number like Elder Gabar or a number like this, but some a hundredfold. Some what? Some 60. Some 60. And some 30. And some 30. But nonetheless... They're bringing fruit. Their works speak of what they believe in. Their works speak of who they are and who they serve. 
That's why I'm like, listen, you have to be careful who you lend your ear to because their works are going to tell you who their father is. Okay? And what they're working for. You believe in the most high? Okay, you, you, you follow this parable here? Well, you should be bringing forth fruit. Okay? Hey, brother, let me share a scripture with you, brother. Let me break this down. Brother, where's your fruit? Okay. Wait, hold up now. I'm fact checking now. You understand? So we understand what it is, right? And how to look at what these seeds bring forth. When you plant it on good ground, right? It brings forth fruit of the most high. It brings forth the increase because it tell you one man plant, another man watereth, and the most high give the increase. So if the most high is within that work, he's going to increase it. Okay, that's the thing. No man, no one man in flesh could gather people. Need y'all to understand that. It's the most high that gives the increase. It's the most high that releases the flow of those people and the blessings that way. That's the father. No man can take that credit. That's the most high. But that's also how you know the most highs in a person and working through a person. You know them by their fruit. Okay? Now, we must go as we're commanded and bear fruit. Offenses come and go. But at the end of the day, we must hang in there until the end. One body, one mission, and one father of all who showed us the way of mercy and love. Never forget that. Okay, and endure in this world until the end. Let's give the most high some praise. <laughs>